Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my fourth week of teaching on financial stewardship, and I still have at least one more week to go. You know, I've been teaching this week on prosperity isn't selfish. Next week, I'm going to start talking about the tithe. And I know that that's not a favorite subject of a lot of people, but there is a grace way to look at the tithe so that it's not debt and obligation and you're cursed with the curse if you don't tithe. I think that it's really going to help you. So I've still got more to share, but I've already covered a lot of material and I just want to encourage you to please get these materials. Today's going to be my last day to teach on this fourth uh, teaching out of this six part set on financial stewardship. And I've covered a lot of material, but this week I've been talking about the motive for prosperity. Or I think the title of that teaching is Prosperity Isn't Selfish. The thing that turns a lot of people off when you teach on prosperity is because sometimes it is taught in a selfish way about this is God is your ticket to be able to get whatever you want. And that's not what I'm teaching at all. I don't believe that that's what the Bible teaches. Now, does that mean that therefore God doesn't want to prosper you? No, God wants to prosper you, but the real motive behind your giving shouldn't be to get, but it should be to give. But that being said, let me say that I believe that when I give, it's given back unto me. I believe that I will reap a hundredfold in this life. And I believe it's right to believe that because the scripture teaches it. I've already used those scriptures in Mark chapter 10, Luke chapter 6, verse 38 and other places. I believe in, in receiving that there is a return on my giving in this life. And I believe that it's important for me to believe that because if I don't believe it, then I hinder God's supply to me and I can be less of a blessing because I'm not going to have as much abundance. So I do believe in give and it will be given unto you. But my emphasis isn't on giving to get, but my emphasis is on I give, believe that it comes back to me so that I can be an even bigger blessing. The emphasis is always on the giving part. I believe that that's what the Bible teaches. God so loved the world that he gave. God gave his son and he reaped back millions and millions of sons and daughters in return. It's just a law of God. You can't stop it that if you give and if you live to give, it's going to come back to you. It just is a law of God. You can't deny it. And yet that religion has gotten people to where they try and deny this. I remember that my mother, of course, we were brought up, I was brought up in her home and I was brought up with a lot of her same attitudes. But my mother, she would sometimes give to Jamie and me, whether it was just a gift or, you know, sometimes she'd give money. After we started in the ministry, she would support it. And there was times that it was really critical, the money that she gave us, and it was a blessing. And I would tell her, I believe God's going to bless you back a hundred times based on Mark chapter 10. And my mother's pat answer was always, oh, I didn't give to get. I don't want any return on this. Now, I understood what she meant. She gave because she loved us. She loved the ministry. She loved what God was doing through us. And I agree as far as that goes. But to say that you don't even want it returned, that's not wise. And there was lots of times I'd tell her and I'd teach her. And eventually she got to where she would give, not to get, but she would believe and accept the return on it so that she could continue to be a bigger giver. And I tell you, my mother was a giver. She got audited a number of times by the Internal Revenue Service because she gave away over 50% of all of her income, even in retirement. She gave away so much money, they said, nobody gives away as much money as you do. And they wanted to come see her, her figures. And sure enough, she did. My mother was a giver. And because of it, I mean, she was blessed, 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 blessed until the day of her death. She had plenty and extra and she left an inheritance. She was a blessing. I'm telling you, it works. God wants to prosper you, but it's not just so that you can get more. It's so that you can be a bigger blessing, a greater blessing to other people. And there's so many people that just don't believe this. So this week, I've dedicated the entire week to trying to get this point across that the real reason that you need to believe in prosperity, if you've got enough, if you're satisfied, well, believe for extra and send it to me. Send it to somebody else who's preaching the gospel. Help us get the gospel out. Don't just use it for yourself. 
And see, if you understand that, that takes the number one criticism against prosperity away, which is greed and selfishness. It's not selfish to believe in prosperity. It's so that you can be a blessing. It's so that you can help other people. You know, again, I've got so many illustrations of this. I'm thinking of this lady right now, Sandy Harmon, that when she first came to our Bible school, she was from uh, Virginia, and she actually went to a psychologist in Rona, or Richmond, Virginia. And this psychologist is a friend of mine now, and she's really been impacted by my ministry, and she has a whole bunch of my teachings and stuff there, and she tells people when they come in, here's what you need. You can either listen to this guy for free, you can go on his website and get it, or you can pay me a hundred and whatever dollars per hour, uh, and I'll tell you these same things. So anyway, she turned Sandy on to this teaching. Sandy got so touched. She was coming from an abusive situation where her husband had physically hurt her. She was afraid she was going to hurt the kids. And because of that, she had to leave. And anyway, she came out here destitute. We had to help her. Now this woman is super prosperous and she is using her prosperity to be a blessing to other people. Watch this little DVD about Sandy and then at the end of our program, make sure you write in and request these same materials that we taught her. They'll work for you. It was actually Memorial Day of 1999 that um, I realized that something had to change and knew that for me to stay in my marriage um, could really possibly mean my safety. I had had twin daughters that were two, and I was four months pregnant with my son. After trying to deal with it, um, going to church elders, um, going to Christian counselors, because I, I didn't want to be a single mom. I didn't want to leave. I wanted it to work out. Um, and, you know, my children needed a father. I decided that it was best for me to leave. And so, um, because he had been physically abusive as well, um, and had threatened to kill me, he came home and we were gone. I was a stay-at-home mom and I had no other income, so I left everything. Um, we, what I did pack up was our clothes. He still had sofa, he still had the dishes, he still had everything. And then I stayed with my parents for three months, um, not really knowing um, what to do. I had moved into a government subsidized apartment complex. I'm in this little apartment and all I would do is just read the Bible and I would read Psalms. And in doing that, I began to slowly discover God is my father and my provider and who he is and what his character was like. At that time, I felt a lot of shame. I felt like I had done something wrong, but I hadn't. But that was a process of healing that I had to walk out with the Lord. I began seeing the Christian counselor, wonderful woman who really un not only understood the word, um, really understood her authority. One day she said, do you mind if I give you a tape to listen to? And I was like, sure. Um, and she said, well, it's this, it's this tape, Spirit, Soul, and Body. It's by a minister named Andrew Womack. Have you ever heard of him? And I said, I haven't heard of anybody but Billy Graham. I don't know of anybody else. And um, she said, so, you know, listen to it. And let me know what you think. I was looking at myself in the body and in the soul. And I didn't always act right. I didn't always talk right. I didn't always think right. And because of that, I just had a disconnect. How could holy, almighty God love me and really use me? Because I could see these flaws in me. I just thought, everything about me was filthy, so how could God, I know He saved me, but it was my, it was like He was having a good day and He felt bad for me, so that's how come He saved me. Your spirit is as pure, as righteous, and holy right this moment as it will ever be in eternity. Your spirit is perfect. There is no sin, there is no inadequacy, there is no fear, there's no depression, there's no discouragement. There is not anything negative in your spirit. Your born again spirit is identical to Jesus. I had led Bible studies. I had sat under 
great preachers. I had volunteered in every way of lay leadership within a church that you could. And no one had ever told me what I was hearing on, the, on that teaching series. I was calling the ministry every week, ordering my three free tapes, listening to them. Andrew didn't come on TV. Um, so I would actually, after I put my kids to bed, um, I would listen to him for four or five hours a night online and just listen to, because he had started archiving <laughs> his teachings so I could listen See, to them. this is saying that God has already blessed us. When I was making encouragement calls out of our house, um, I used to open up almost every conversation with, we want to thank you for contacting Andrew Womack Ministries, and uh, is there anything we can pray with you about today? Mark Abernathy actually called me, and he was on the encouragement department, and I had just hung up the phone with my attorney, and I was, I was really upset, and I honestly, I mean, it had to have been God, because I don't know why I would have answered the phone. I was very upset to where I couldn't even hardly speak. And he was like, hi, this is Mark from the encouragement department. And we want to see if there's anything we can pray with you about today. And I said, well, I just need understanding to answer his question. He prayed for me. I don't even know what he prayed. But I remember this one fragment that he said during the prayer was something about the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when he was done, I said, can I ask you a question? And he said, is it about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And I said, well, yeah, how'd you know that? And he said, well, the Holy Spirit quickened to me while I was praying for you that you've been asking for that. He said, what do, you, what do you want to know? And so I don't even know how long we spent on the phone, but it was me in my house by myself in my glider rocking chair. And at the end of our phone conversation, I was speaking in tongues and filled with the Holy Spirit. And from that moment forward, so from September until May of 02, I just grew so much in the Lord. I was spending $300 a month in co-pays because my kids were sick. And it was so exhausting. And as a single mom, I couldn't afford it. And I was building up the credit card debt. After listening to the Nikki Oshinsky video and listening to teachings online, I was a little bit frustrated because I was, I was like, it makes sense to me in my head, but I don't get it. I was going to the food pantry because I couldn't afford to pay my bills. I couldn't afford groceries. I had run up thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in attorney's fees with dealing with the divorce. I just said, you know what, why do I have to wait? I can just go to Colorado now and go to CBC and start pursuing the Lord and really start figuring out what do you want me to do? I had been believing the Lord for $2,000 to be able to move. Um, about a week before I was to leave, I knew um, that money was coming to me that day and I knew that it was coming in the mail. And when I went and got it, there was an envelope. It was um, a money market account that I had run dry living off of. And my statement showed that there was $1.31 in it every month, except for that one. And it showed that there was $2,466 in it. And I called the guy and I said, are you sure this, I can come and take this out right now? He said, yeah, but why do you want to do that? And I said, because I'm going to Colorado. And I'm so glad I started to pack because I knew that I was supposed to go and it really was his job to provide. But up until that point, I really hadn't believed the Lord for very much. So that was a huge thing. And so we left, um, left on a Wednesday, got here on a Friday, got my kids registered for school. Um, on Saturday morning, the Lord provided an apartment. I didn't have a job. Um, and they even waived the deposit. And I started school on Monday. And it was wonderful. I just, I'm a little bit speechless because how do you explain the words of beginning to know that you're, you're, you're beginning your destiny? Besides the great teaching, one of the big things of, that the Lord used to bring healing while I was at the school, the Lord was really healing how I saw men how I saw authority, how I saw people interact with each other, that you didn't have to be treated like an object, that people really valued you and really cared about you, that people genuinely just wanted to give you a hug and they didn't want something else from you. And that really 
was kind of like a silent healing that you didn't talk about, but that the Lord was doing. When I began my apprenticeship, the Lord began to put the desire in my heart to go back into real estate. I really didn't want to do that, but after a while I just couldn't keep saying no. And so I said, you know, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to call brokers. And so what am I supposed to say to him? He called them and asked them if they want help with their business. I'm like, um, okay, how am I supposed to do that? I was limited in how I saw myself and what I thought that I could do because I thought, well, Sandy equals the sum total of her experiences, but I needed to understand that Sandy equals the possibilities that are found in the Word of God. All of a sudden, I became a very resourceful person <laughs> and began calling agents and just asking them, do you need some help with your business? And I'd tell them a little bit about my background. Um, and it was kind of hit and miss, you know, no one knew me, so it really wasn't going well to begin with. And so every day after I came home from the Bible college, doing the apprenticeship, I would literally just speak in tongues for four hours, speaking over scriptures that had to do with God providing, that He is more than able to supply all my needs. Um, I got a phone call one day, and it was a gal that uh, knew this agent that I had never met. And she had come by this agent's office that day and said, uh, can I hire your assistant? And she said, no. But this gal, Sandy Harmon, she's awesome. Give her a call. So she called me and said, Dan Lloyd gave me your phone number. She says you're great to work with and I really need help with my business. And the Holy Spirit said, you're going to minister to her. And I said, okay. I went over to her house not knowing the situation that the Lord was going to put me in. But I knew that I was going to minister to her. I know nothing about title insurance, and I'm there to help her with her business. And within five minutes, she starts saying, well, you know, it must be God's will, because blah, 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 and she starts telling me her life. And I'm just listening, and in my mind's eye, I'm going, this is too good. This is just too good. And I, I literally spend the next four hours ministering the goodness and love of God to her. And so we began a wonderful uh, relationship friendship. We're still very good friends. Um, and I did help her with her business, not knowing anything about title. Doubled her business in a month's time um, by the grace of God. And that woman connected me with so many realtors that she knew because she had the relationships. And it was just like that over and over and over where I would meet someone and they would just start talking about their life. I'd be there to help them with their other business because the Word says your gift will open a door for you. Well, my gift was, I say herding cats. So, you know, organization, I understand realtors, um, but at the same time, the principles that I would teach them and how they should run their business were godly principles. You have to sow to reap. You have to run your business with integrity. You have to do it as unto the Lord. And He would always put realtors in my path that needed that encouragement or needed to hear something that they'd never heard before about God. The jobs that I would be offered, um, working, helping open up a title company in the Springs and running a real estate company of 120 realtors, all those jobs came to me by the favor of God. It wasn't any job that I had ever sought out. It was because I met somebody and they knew somebody and they said, hey, you need to talk to her. It all has happened um, not planned by me. Well, it was in 2009 when the Lord said, Sandy, if it's not by grace, it doesn't belong to you. And that's when I said, okay, so what am I supposed to do? And he said, call brokers. And I'm like, we did that before. So I then began to actually be a little bit more serious about it. Whereas before I would call people and that might open up one door and open up another. That's when I began to set up a website. That's when I began to put together the marketing. And then I just believed that, okay, I'm doing my part. This time it worked. This time it was completely different. This time I was completely different. When I began just saying, you know what? As long as I know that I'm doing what you want me to do, then I'm gonna be okay. Because that's all that really matters. And so Lord, what do you want me to call it? What is this, what is this business about? And I just felt like I should call it helping you succeed because I'm helping others. That doesn't matter whether I'm helping out in a ministry or if I'm helping someone in real estate. 
My heart is to see other people succeed and the Lord just allows me to come alongside them. Because the last four years in real estate, that's what he had been developing, all these different areas. He was actually training me and being very patient with me, getting me the training that I needed to be able to have a platform to have an opportunity into people's lives, really, to minister to them. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful that I have more stability now in my job working for the Lord than I ever did with any of the jobs that I ever tried to get <laughs> and be laid off from. I can never be laid off. I'm working for the Lord. And honestly, if he doesn't make the phone ring, then I'm not calling them. I mean, I'm, I'm contacting them. I'm doing my part. But if it's blessed, it's because the Lord blessed it. I always say I never, my electricity never was cut off. I never went without food. We always had clothes. I always had gas in the car. I didn't have any of the things that we worry about having. I came close. There were times that I might not have always seen everything that I believed for, but God by His mercy still provided. And it just always worked out. Has it always been easy? No. But God has always been faithful. And every year, my life has truly gotten better and better. I've walked away from enormous amounts of debt, enormous amounts of pressure, enormous amounts of bill collectors calling, and you name it, I have been through it. But I have walked away from it one year at a time with the Lord, and every year has gotten better and better to where now I'm walking in a stability that I've never had working for big corporations, knowing exactly how much I got every two weeks from my paycheck. You know, I have more stability now than when I had a regular job. It really is awesome because I know that it's from God and it's really His job to provide. And when I give Him advice on the finances, it doesn't work out well. I try and take over control, it doesn't work out. I just need to trust Him and keep moving forward. Today, nearly 12 million single moms raise children in America. The Sandy Harmon story shows that this statistic does not have to be a tragic one. Her destiny can be your destiny. Married or single, true success is found in an intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. Start on the path to financial freedom when you get Andrew's complete teaching titled Financial Stewardship. 